Hi there, this is Mr. Wells. In today's video, we're going to be talking about distance and scale in astronomy. And so before we go too far into the distances and scales of our solar system and our galaxy and our universe, I think it's important to get a sense of perspective about our own planet. So planet Earth is 5.972 sextillion kilograms in mass. That's huge. Uh, its volume is 1.083 times 10 to the 12th cubic kilometers. Its average density, because it's a rocky world, we'll find that it's actually a pretty dense planet at 5.514 grams per cubic centimeter. And its equatorial circumference is 40,075 kilometers. Now, right away, that might not mean much to us. So why don't we compare it to something that's just a little bit bigger? So let's compare the scale of the Earth to our local star, the Sun. Now, the Sun is truly, truly impressive. The sun comprises 99%, 99% of all of the matter in the solar system. Its mass is 333,000 times that of the Earth. Its volume, 1.3 million times that of the Earth. Uh, it is a little bit less dense, and we'll talk about that when we talk about the composition of the Earth, the sun, and all of the inner and outer planets of our solar system. And its equatorial circumference is 109 times greater than the Earth, which means that we could fit 109 Earths across and around the Sun. That's truly impressive. It's so impressive, in fact, that I drew this little, and I said not to scale, I drew this little model right here of the Earth. That model is still a little bit too big if you compare the Earth to the Sun, because you can fit 109 Earths around the Sun. You can fit a million Earths inside of the Sun. So here's an interesting thought experiment to think about how truly big the sun is compared to the earth. If we took the speed of an airliner, and this is about the max speed of a normal airliner, 900 kilometers per hour. If we flew around the equator of the earth all the way around in circumference, how long would it take to fly around? So we can figure that out. We can take 40,075 kilometers. We can divide that by 900 kilometers per hour cancel our kilometers and what we'll find out is that it takes about 45 hours for the average airliner to fly around the earth now the sun is a different story let's say we flew at that same 900 kilometers per hour with the sun let's say 900 kilometers per hour kilometers cancel what we would find out if we do this math is that it would take about 4,865 hours to fly around the circumference of the sun. In days, that's 202 days. Imagine that for a second. To fly around the sun, it would take 202 days, where on the earth it would take 45 hours. You Okay, so the sun is pretty impressive in its scale. Let's pull out a little bit more and look at the solar system now. So the solar system is so big that astronomers have had to come up with a new unit of measurement to make it more simple to describe relative distances between the planets and other planetary objects. And so that distance is called an astronomical unit, which is 150 million kilometers. Why 150 million kilometers? That is the distance, the orbital distance, of the Earth to the Sun. So the Earth to the Sun is 150 million kilometers, or 93 million miles, and that we would call 1 AU. Let's pull out even further and talk about Jupiter. So if we look at Jupiter, Jupiter is about 5.2 AU from the Sun. So it is 5.2 times further from the Sun than the Earth is from the Sun. And when we start to look at the other planets in astronomical units, and I'll, I'll pull that up right now, clearly this figure is not to scale because these look relatively close together. And actually it is true that the inner planets are relatively close together, but as you start to move out into the gas giants, those astronomical units get exponentially bigger and to the point where in Neptune, we're looking at 30 astronomical units, 30 times further from the sun than the Earth is. These are truly, truly impressive distances, and it makes sense now why 
we have to use a different unit of measurement because writing out those large numbers almost wouldn't make sense. We're almost at this stage where we have to use different forms of measurement in order to describe these vast, vast distances. Okay, so I wanna show you three objects from different distances and scales in the universe. And I wanna see how long it's taken for the light from those objects to reach us here on the Earth. So I'm gonna start with our nearest galactic neighbor, the galaxy that is next to the Milky Way. That is the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is 2.5 million light years away, which means that the light that we're seeing in this picture is 2.5 million years old. It's one of the profound things we're gonna discover in astronomy is that the light from distant objects give us a snapshot into what the universe looked like in the past. So with the Andromeda Galaxy, the light that we're seeing is a snapshot of the Andromeda Galaxy from 2.5 million years ago. If the Andromeda Galaxy disappeared today, we would never know of it. It would take 2.5 million years for people in the future to actually observe that happening. Okay, let's go a little bit further out. Let's look at galaxy NGC 3972. So this galaxy is 65 million light years away. And I picked this galaxy for a very specific reason. You might know that 65 million years ago, something very interesting happened on the Earth. Let's say that we had an alien civilization, the most advanced in the universe, and it lived in galaxy NGC 3972. Let's say they developed the world's largest telescope and they wanted to look at us, at little planet Earth. If they had looked on the right day, 65 million years ago, what they would have seen is something pretty devastating, the extinction of the dinosaurs. I think this serves as a really good example of how this phenomena of being able to peer into the past based off of the amount of time it takes for light to travel actually occurs. So in, if we were living on NGC 3972, and let's say we could develop a telescope that would be able to look at the Earth, we would be getting a snapshot of us from 65 million years ago. So we would be seeing the dinosaurs and, unfortunately, the extinction of the dinosaurs. Amazingly, we can go even further out. This picture is the oldest picture in the entire universe because it's a picture of an early proto-galaxy that is 13.2 billion light years away. Now think about that for a second. We know that the universe is roughly 13.7 billion years old. So we're seeing a snapshot of the very, very early universe with this picture. With better technology, we might even be able to peer further into the past. But as of right now, this picture that was taken from the Hubble Ultra Deep Field is the picture of the oldest known object in the universe. Let's do a little thought experiment really quick. So let's imagine that I flip a switch and I turn all of the lights of the entire universe off. And then I turn that switch back on immediately. What would we see? Well, actually, we'd see nothing for about eight minutes. And then finally, eight minutes later, we'd start to see the Earth. Everything would come back into view. Except we'd be missing the night sky. And so how long would the night sky take to come back? The answer is that it would come back in different intervals. Just in a couple minutes, we would start to see some really bright stars. Those bright stars being planets, like Venus. 10 minutes, we would see Venus. 15 minutes, we would see Mars. In about an hour, we would see Jupiter. After we get our planets back, we'd be waiting around for a really long time. Probably a couple decades. After some years, we would start to finally see some of the bright, bright stars in the night sky, the ones that are the closest to us. So in a few decades to even a few centuries, we'd start to see some bright stars. And over the centuries and thousands of years, we'd be starting to claim back our night sky. Some of the most famous things are still going to be missing, though, like the arms of our Milky Way galaxy. That would take thousands of years to come back. And even after we reclaimed most of the night sky, some of the stuff like the, the Andromeda galaxy, what we talked about, that would finally show up as a little smudge in the sky two and a half million years later. That's how long it would take for the Andromeda galaxy to turn back on in this experiment. 
Well, that's going to wrap up our video on distance and scale. Thank you so much for watching. Next time you go out in the night sky, take a look and appreciate just how long it took for some of the light that you're seeing to travel to the earth to reach your eyes. I hope you learned a thing or two about distance and scale. Have a wonderful day.